This is the new SwitchBot Hub 3, and to be honest, I've got mixed feelings about it. But if you're a Home Assistant or HomeKit user, then stick around because it's got one brilliant feature. So a great feature of this hub is the ability to control Home Assistant devices from this hub, up to 30 of them. So you can see here, I've got a menu called Home Assistant, and I can just scroll down and select and just turn the device on and off. Brilliant. So to set this menu up, you need to go into the SwitchBot app and then you need to create a button under Matter and then go to Manage Matter Accessories and then you need to scroll down and just click the plus icon next to the Hub 3 button. And then a new shortcut should appear and you can rename it to whatever you like. And then basically that'll expose it as an entity in Home Assistant and then you just link that to an automation. You can also set it to control SwitchBot devices, of course, and you can do that with one click of a button. Unfortunately, with the Home Assistant Matter accessories, you have to go into the menu and then select it. But hopefully they will improve this in a future firmware update because they could easily do this. So as an example, if I want to go straight to the curtains, then I can just press this shortcut. But if I want to go to a Home Assistant device, then I have to go to the Matter menu and then select the device. I can't get it to select straight away the floor lamp, for example. And it's worth mentioning that SwitchBot seems to have finally embraced Home Assistant and realised that it's actually good for their business model rather than bad. So I'm really excited to see that the new SwitchBot Lock Ultra that they released is actually certified with Home Assistant. And if you do have the Lock Ultra, then you can also get it to show a little indicator here to show whether the door is locked or unlocked. And if you have the keypad vision as well, then you can also use the Hub 3 as a doorbell by pressing this button. But I found it to be quite slow to respond, so I don't really use it. Now, if you don't want to get a SwitchBot Hub like the Hub 3 or the Hub 2 or the Hub Mini, then you can use the SwitchBot Bluetooth integration instead directly with Home Assistant, which is great. But it's not simple to set up and you need to set up things like ESP devices so that they can communicate with Home Assistant. So they're not for everyone. So I think SwitchBot hubs still have their place. So onto the buttons that I was talking about. So you can see here, there's four indicators and you would think that you could press these to do something. But unfortunately, this isn't a touch screen. So the buttons are actually underneath and you can barely see the little indicators. But once you get used to them, then they are good and they work, but you press the button and then it'll take you into the device. This dial is quite a nice feature and you can use this for things like Apple HomeKit control. It's also got up, down, left and right buttons, even though it's not immediately obvious, so that's quite nice. And then the push in the button to activate the control. The Hub has various other features, such as being able to show your local weather on its screen, alongside the temperature and the humidity, which is taken from the sensor on the Hub's USB cable, just like its predecessor. It also has a motion sensor, which is primarily used for activating the display when you get close to it, but it's also exposed via matter along with the temperature and humidity. Again, just like the previous hub, it has a built-in light sensor, which you might be able to use for some of your automations, like opening the curtains, but this will depend on where you've placed the hub in your home. The hub can control infrared devices, which can be handy if you've got a hub in your lounge or within range of something like an aircon unit, whereby you could use the hub's temperature to automatically turn it on or off. So far, I've said quite a few good things about the hub. So why did I say that I've got mixed feelings about it? Well, it's because the mixture of the things that it can offer. It can offer a lot of different things, but it depends on where you place it in your home. For example, if you have it in your lounge, then it would be good for the infrared blaster and probably the temperature and humidity, but maybe not as much for controlling devices. It might not be as convenient going up to the hub to change the device. Whereas you might as well just use your voice assistant instead. But if you put the hub in a hallway, then it would be really good for controlling devices with the dial, but it might be not so good at controlling infrared devices because they probably won't be in range. And likewise with controlling things like your TV through Apple or through the Fire Stick, which it also supports, you could use that great if it's in the lounge, but not if it's in another room. So maybe a good place for this is actually a bedroom because you're probably going to have on your bedside table where you can access it easily and it'll have access to all your different devices close to you. Well, let me know what you think in the comments below. If you haven't already got a SwitchBot Hub, then I think it's definitely worth getting it. But if you've already got one, then maybe wait for the Hub 4 because I think there is some room for improvement.
Well, that's it for today. So thanks until next time. So here's an example of a Home Assistant automation using the SwitchBot Hub 3 buttons. So as you can see here, I've got the event entities from the SwitchBot Hub for each button. And then the important bit is here, I've got a condition which filters out states that are from or to unavailable. Because there are situations where if it goes to unavailable, then it will think it's a button press. And then you just do your actions as normal. So I'll leave this in the description so that you can copy and paste it. So this bracket looks neat. So I initially just thought that this would clip onto here and it can, I think. But I then wondered why there was this. And I think this is a wall mounting bracket. And if you look carefully at this, you can see a screw here. So I think you can take this plate off and then use it to attach it to your wall. So that's really clever. I'll have a look in the manual and confirm and I'll report back if I'm talking rubbish. So here are all the settings of the hub. So if we go into device settings, you can see that you can set it to 24 hour clock or 12 hour. There's an auto brightness based on the light sensor. You can change the detection sensitivity. So when you walk up to the device and then there's also an option to turn on or off the standby screen. And then if we go into alert conditions, you can see that there's a lock status voice alert. So if you've got the switch bot lock, then it will tell you when the lock has been locked or unlocked. And you can also set alerts like temperature and humidity. Calibration, this is if your temperature or humidity on the hub is not showing correctly, then you can do an offset. The doorbell feature is what I showed you before, where you link it to a certain doorbell. And if you press the button on the vision keypad, then it will do a doorbell chime. And it also actually allows you to create alarms. So this would be good if you've got the hub in your bedroom. And to go with this, you've got a do not disturb that you can set for certain times of the day where it will disable your lights and your sounds. Further down is standard things like logs and Wi-Fi settings. But then you've also got the matter setup, which you'll need to do if you want to link it to Home Assistant or Apple Home and also installation guide. And also this is where you update your firmware. If we go back to the main page, then you can see displayed info. This is where you toggle whether it shows the weather or doesn't show the weather on the display. Environmental data source is where you're supposed to be able to select a different device to show your temperature and humidity, I think, but it doesn't show my hub too for some reason. And then lock status is the bit I mentioned where you can show the lock status on the screen. And then customize shortcuts is where it takes you to the place where you can actually set the four buttons on the screen. So you can see I've got curtains, door lock and home assistant. I'm not using the third button at the moment. And then the final option is devices and scenes, which is where you actually configure your matter devices. So if you go to manage devices, then it will show the devices here. And if you go into manage scenes, then this is where you can create scenes as well. But to be honest, I don't really use these because I do most things in home system.